Hello, hello everyone. Ted Simpson here, ready to do another fine painting with you all. I hope you, uh, once in a while, pull out your paints and, and paint along with me. Let me know if uh, you have any questions on that. Uh, the colors I'm using today, oh, I got most of them laid out here. Titanium White, Little Midnight Black, Van Dyke Brown, Dark Sienna, the missing sap green, and then a little bit of the uh, yellows. Cad yellow, Indian yellow, yellow ochre. So, I'm not fancy enough to have the colors run along the bottom of the screen there, but I can hold them up and let you know which colors I'm using as I'm using them. You may have noticed here, uh, I got a nice clean palette today. If you go back and look at my other videos, my other recent videos, that palette was getting awfully stained. So I put some like degreasing soap um, and just went at it with the knife and just scratched and scraped all that residue off. So I got a nice clean palette for you all today. Let's see here. I've got a bunch of brushes, so I'm just going to take my two inch brush here. I'm going to take my liquid white, and today I'm just going to make lots and lots of concentric circles. I pick up some color from the center here, and I'm just going to grind it in. Picking up the color and just working it outwards. Oop, wrong, wrong paint there. A little bit more of the liquid white around the corners. The last couple of paintings I did... I went a little too light with the uh, liquid white. I was trying to put my water in here and the canvas was just really, really dry. It was embarrassing. But I didn't have my canvas prepped and nor did I test it very well. But in, at least in this painting here today, I don't believe we're going to be having any water. So having a little dry, drier canvas isn't going to hurt so much. It's all going to get filled in with some land and, and other dark colors anyway, but still we want our thin layer of liquid white to help slide and, and blend a little easier. But it isn't as, poor, as important to have a ton of liquid white out there. I'm not going to be doing a lot of blending in the bottom there, a little bit. See, there we go. You can always skip ahead if you haven't already to get, uh, to, get to the good stuff. There we go. Doesn't take very long. I'll do my little fingertip test. There we go. Thin, even amount. And I don't even think I'll clean the brush, other than a quick stir into a paper towel. So, what are we going to do today? Maybe a nice, interesting sky. I'm going to take my knife here, and I'm going to flatten down that color a little bit, just gently pressing and then pulling away. Let's go first into a little bit. Indian yellow. Beat that paint into the top of the brush here. See? You want a nice even distribution across the top. And then, ooh, let's figure it out. Somewhere here. Look at that. Nice little sweeping strokes. Blending upward a little bit. I can pick up color and work it upwards. And you can see here, the more it mixes with the liquid white, it'll keep getting lighter on you. You know, it's up to you how light, how bright you want this sky to look. There we go. Giving it a quick brush out, take out any excess paint out of the, the brush. Not really worrying about it too much. Take a little bit of the yellow ochre. Bashing it in so we got a nice even distribution of color up there. And let's hit it, pushing firmly to get the color off, and then hitting it lightly to soften it. And kind of do that all at the same time. 
little bit of color. Soften it. You can't really tell where, where the one color ends and the next color begins. And the thing is, if you want it bolder, you can make it bolder. You go, keep going over it, if it's not to your liking, too strong, well, just, just keep hitting it. and It'll soften. It'll mix with that Indian yellow. Get a nice transition there. Super simple. Now, I'm going to give my brush a nice clean here in my paint thinner. Swish it around in my bucket that has the screen in it. Bash, bash, bash. Wipe the excess off. And I got my beater bucket over here. And then, always make sure we get all that paint thinner out of the paper towel, onto the paper towel. There we go. I'm going to take a little bit of this Midnight Black, press down, and pull out. Midnight Black. This Midnight Black actually has just a just a hint of a, a purpliness to it. And I'm gonna put it right across the top here. Maybe a little more right there. See that? And then I'm gonna work it down. Sweep, 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 sweep. See, I like to use the side of the brush and kind of this smile, sort of a figure eight motion. If I use the full width, I mean, it just all happens super quick. And if you want to do it in about two seconds, yeah, you can just use the full width of the brush. But if you want a little more control and maybe a little more variation, try using it sideways. It'll put all these little features in your sky. Maybe look like distant clouds. I don't know. Just gives it a little more interesting look. I'm going to bring it down so it's just overlapping that yellow ochre. Lighten up the touch to take out any lingering brush marks. And then I just work my way up. If it's bugging you, sometimes it's easier here to stop, wipe out the excess paint. You might pick up a little liquid white on those bristles. So when you're sweeping too often, you'll see white things come out, more white streaks. Clean your brush and then give it a quick once over and it'll soften and take out those brush marks really, really easily. Look at that. And I'm going to soften that transition a little bit more. There we go. I like that. Now, with a small amount of that same Midnight Black, very small amount, very small amount. You think you have too much? Just bash some out. We can always add more. <laughs> but what I'm going to do is come up here with my brush a little low, and I'm going to tap. Tap, 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 tap. Same Midnight Black. Look at that, how we can create some little lazy clouds hanging out there. Brush off my brush <laughs> into the paper towel and then give it a quick wipe across. Look at that. Soften that little distant cloud. You could have one down here. Even lighter, look at that. Hardly any paint on the brush, but it will show up. You could have a strong one here, or super light ones, it's up to you. One last stir out into a paper towel, one last go over, little hair there, Ooh, little hair there, almost like look like a distant bird. And look at that, that's super simple. So, 
I'm going to show you something here. I don't think Bob did this on the particular episode I'm, I'm working off of, but looking at the uh, another version of that picture, ooh, another hair. It looks like he went in, at least to my eye here, it looks like he went into a little bit of titanium white and ooh, maybe even more. Dropped it in and went up. Putting in a little bright spot here, maybe even more. There we go. I think the problem is I'm not using enough paint. There, now we've got some light color here. Blending outwards. Blending upwards. Come back with a clean brush. Soften it a little bit, just to add a little bit of a bright spot down here in the horizon line. Look at that. The more you go over it, the more you can spread it out, spread it up. There we go. All right, now you know what I didn't do. I didn't put out my alizarin crimson. There we go. We're making up a big batch of brown here. So let's take my green, about the same amount of crimson, and let's mix those two colors together. Sap green, alizarin crimson, in about equal proportion. Make a lovely brown. And you can have this a little bit to the green side or to the red side, but it still looks good. You just figure out what you like. And if you don't like it, if it's a little too red, add more green and vice versa until you find the color that you like. Hard to tell when it's in a big pile here, so I'll take a little bit of white, a little bit of my color, and just mash them together. Look at that. I think that's a little bit to the green side of brown. Get rid of that. Don't want to add white to it, but I can add a little bit more crimson. Mix that pile up. And everything gets a little truer brown there when they're nice and even colored. Equal proportions. Let's see how that looks. A little bit of white, a little bit of my color. To my eye, that looks a little bit better. Okay, wipe off my knife there. Really get that paint up out of my way. And then let's spread some down. Okay, what are we doing here today? It's a crazy day here. I'm going to use a brush I haven't used in a long time. Haven't even practiced a bit here. This is the, uh, the one inch round brush. It's not exactly round. It's got a little, a little bevel to it. But I think holding this brush vertically rather than horizontally, I'm holding it vertically. It makes for some amazing treetops. Bashing that paint in there. And look at that. I'm, I'm mostly up here on the top half of the brush. So I hold my brush a little bit upright and pow! Look at that. Makes for instant bushes and trees. Really, I'm only focusing on this top edge. The more paint you have in your brush, the darker it'll be. And notice here, I covered bottom edge of this light part. The more white paint you have and the more you keep tapping it, 
it, it, it'll keep lightening up on you. So I started here a little bit darker, and then as I move towards the light, it, it automatically gets a little lighter. Something like that. Cool thing is, if I go right back into that dark color, overlap it at the bottom here, look at that, I can make another layer. Just with it being a little darker, gives the effect of a new layer of underbrush and such. I'm not going to worry about that too much. That's good enough. I think we're going to cover all that up anyway. So, let me clean that brush. I'm just swishing it down here. That works so well to make those those tree toppers. I'm going to use the same brush to do the highlights. There we go. So, let us see here. First off, let's create some runways out of my yellows here. Wiping the knife between colors. Flattening it down into a little runway here so that I can get that paint right up on the tips of the bristles. I'm going to use just a speck of liquid white. I'm not sure I need it that much, but a little bit's not going to hurt. Look at that. Come over here, grab a touch of the green. Tap, tap, tap. And let's see about making making some highlights here. A little bit of green, a little bit of cadmium yellow. Change up the color a little bit. We get some nice little bushes and under the trees, around the trees, next to them, all sorts of good stuff. Reload your brush often, every little bush or two, that's about all you get out of one paint load. And for me, it really helps here to work from the top down, okay? The way that we're tapping and overlapping as we go, if you work your way up, things tend to just turn to mud as you're going here. Yeah, good start. All right, so let's start building our our foreground or, or just things that are a little bit closer, this nice open field. I can already tell I might not have enough of my brown mix here. We'll see. So using my big old two inch brush, this happens quick. I just, ooh, I just hit it. And look at that. I cut off the base of those bushes and just tapping and moving horizontally it immediately gives the impression of horizontal flat looking land here a little bit of color tapping and moving now as you tap it yes it's gonna keep picking up that liquid white and you're running out of brown in your brush and look how lighter it gets. You just stop, you pick up some color. And look at that, we can create a whole new layer here. 
if you were to come over here and pick up a little bit of black, it'll change the color a little bit, make it a little darker as I'm moving my way forward. Just dropping it in. I don't really know what is exactly it's going to do. I just have an idea of my lay of the land, so to speak. sorts of little hills and things going on here. A little bit of black, a little bit of brown, the brown made up of the green and crimson. I guess we'll just go all the way down, what the heck? I think Bob just kind of swept it in there, but I find that sweeping it in makes it mix with the liquid white more. Then again, the more you tap, the more it'll mix in as well. You figure out what works best for you. This is the boring part. It's just, it's just tapping. But it allows you to practice. Practice with this brush. If it's not dark enough, the highlights have a hard time standing out if it's not dark. So you get all these little various things here and maybe gives a little different indication of where the sunlight is striking. Some, sometimes it's a little deeper in shadows, sometimes it's a little brighter. Take that out. All right. So, what is next? Well, we gotta we gotta start highlighting some of this, right? Of course we do. Maybe before we highlight that, I'm gonna take my liner brush and some paint thinner really thin this down very very thin you want this stuff to be so thin that it flows off your brush so I think Bob would say the consistency of ink or milk very very thin I like to say watery really gives you that impression here so just using the tip of the brush I just Lift up here and there, a couple of indications of trunks way back in the distance. You can do this before you do the highlights too. Some of those will get hidden as you put on the bright stuff here. Or you can just sneak some little ones in here, here and there. The cool thing is, is you can do a lot of these. And as you run out of paint in your brush, each one of these little lines gets a little lighter to the point here where you lift up and they're just very, very pale. They'll look even further away. They start off awfully strong and then get lighter and lighter as you run out. Okay. I think I'm going to highlight maybe with my one inch brush here. Bob, Bob does this one here. He has a bigger canvas. He uses the 18 by 24. I've got this 16 by 20. So maybe we can just get the same effect here but with the smaller brush. I am going to pick up a little bit of the liquid white and I'm going to start thinning down this cadmium yellow. Pulling some away, going back and forth, 
pulling some away. You start to get this nice chiseled look to the brush. Okay, I think I'm, I'm going to need more here, but I want to make sure that I have plenty of color out here. And while I'm doing this here, bit more of the sap green. Sap green, cad yellow, maybe some of this Indian yellow just for for volume's sake. Now you keep pulling in more and more colors it might start to thicken up on you here so you can always add a little drop of paint thinner or a little bit more liquid white and I'm gonna tap. Look at this tapping how it pushes up this little ridge of color right there. That's important. Okay, I go back and forth, loading that paint up in my brush, and then I tap forward until I see that little ridge. That allows me to get the paint right up here on the top edge of the brush. And let's figure this out. I'm just going to come in here and do tap. Tap, 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 tap. Continue tapping and let it mix in with this brown as I run out of paint and as I move across the canvas it'll change colors. It'll, it'll be not so bright the more I keep going. Okay, And then I just reload my brush and I continue on. Let's put in a new little ridge of color. See that? Tapping with the one inch brush, letting it come off, letting it mix with the browns here and there, making these little shapes, these little horizontal lines in, in the scene here. And then when I reload the brush, it just starts coming off brighter again. It's all about how much paint you have in your brush and how you tap it, the angle of the brush and the, how much force you give it. It all changes the effect. Maybe a little bit of yellow ochre, cad yellow, touch of the sap green, and just a speck or two of the liquid white. Too much liquid white and it gets a little too loosey-goosey on you, plus it lightens up. I got this new ridge line here, so with a little bit different color, it adds a different flavor to your scene here. It's a little further away from the light, so it makes sense if it's a little darker. it go over it keep tapping it'll get darker and darker and then you can go and add some more color to it and change the flavor as many times as you want okay I'm gonna add a little bit of color here let's have a little coming off this side here I'm not sure how much of this we'll see Some of it's getting covered up, but we'll see some of it. Maybe some more yellows in here. I like the ones where sometimes Bob uses white, and he'll put all sorts of white down here in the land. And I, I haven't quite cracked that code yet of the different flavors uh, of white. To me, it doesn't look right. When I see Bob do it, it just makes perfect sense. But for me, maybe not so much. I guess I just got to practice. Okay, well there's a good start to the highlighting. 
Now let's go right ahead. Let's make our let's make our barn or house or cabin. What are we calling it? It might be well, all three. I don't know. So for this, let me get this Christmas brown here. This this brown we made out of our way. Get a paper towel up here close. I'm going to be wiping it a lot here. Doing a little shelf maintenance here. I'm kind of clogging myself up. There we go. And we're going to be using some Van Dyke brown here. Pull it out nice and flat. And we're going to be using our, our rolls of paint. Okay. Anytime you're doing this, make sure you get a nice even roll of color. If you don't, sometimes I can get away from here. I like to have really consistent uh, rolls of paint. So, let us make our little Eve here. Now Bob made a very shallow looking roof line here. Not quite flat, but getting there, you know. Reminds me of Jeremiah Johnson, that old flat cabin that the, that the, that the bear hunter stayed at. Can't quite remember his name. Put in our little roof line there. And then, you know, sometimes it's helpful here. <laughs> Of course it is helpful, but I don't have one, to have the, the small knife at your disposal. Well, I do have the small edge of my, my large knife. I can use that. Kind of figure out the edges there. And then just scrape off this excess paint. There we go. You scratch off that excess paint, makes it easier to block in the color. doing is just spreading this down little rolls of paint spreading this down if I use the small knife I could have done this in just about two strokes here this will give me a little bit of practice using the short edge and if there's one thing about this style of painting Practice using all the different techniques here with the different tools, with the different sides of the tools. There we go. And as you're doing this, things happen. And maybe you make your roof just, you got to clean up the edge of your roof a little bit, depending on how you put the side in or change the side, depending how the roof goes in. There you go. Let me take a step back. That's looking that's looking almost serviceable. With a little roll on my knife here. Let's see about pulling this just a little bit smoother. See that? How quickly that works with the with the big edge of the knife. Now making our highlight color here with some white, dark sienna, all kind of marbled in there, a little more white, maybe even a touch of the crimson, I don't know. A little bit of paint on the short edge of the knife again. 
and we're just going to graze this down, leaving a little eave on this left side here. Pulling, trying to keep that straight up and down. That'll help create that old board look. There you go. I tell you what, I'm going to come over here with just a little bit lighter color here. It's just a little bit lighter. Just added some white. Now an even lighter touch. Make it a little brighter. Hardly any pressure. Just trying to keep those angles correct. There we go. Now a little bit darker for the side. Just adding in a little bit of brown. Putting a little highlight on this far side to make it look different from the front. To help create that different angle. Okay. Now, a little bit of my highlight color. I'm making up a little different one here. And let's just, ooh, should I use the big edge? I think I will use the big edge here. Just a little bit different shade here. Going to touch. Gotta get a little on that back side there. So just tapping, following the back roof line a little bit. There we go. I like how the sun kind of zings off part of it, leaves some of it a little darker. There we go. Now, if you want to help yourself a little bit, just the tiniest roll possible, like thread-like amount of liquid white. You gotta have a very, very light touch here. There it is. Think thread. A little touch. Maybe across the top, a little bit right there. You can even use the short edge of your knife to pop, pop. Oh, it's not coming off. There it is. There it is. actually did something something different here he created a little oh I don't know a little corn crib or something like that just by touching and pulling away created a little roof right here extra room here. I think he said something about a cow might live there. So a little bit of highlight on the front of it. And then bit of 
highlight on the side. Oh, too big for the long edge there. And then let's give a little little shingle effect here on this. Do 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 do. There we go. Got to have a little door to our cabin here. There it is. Had to get a nice little rectangle here. Maybe there's a little a little window over here. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit of a cabinectomy there. And a little bit of corn cobectomy here. set this off here let's come in here and just tap a little bit of grass right at the bottom a little bit of grass hiding out there Continue moving on here. Just want to change that angle a little bit, make it a little flatter looking at the bottom. There we go. That's looking a little better. It does kind of look like old raggedy shingles on that little fit, little little thing there. Okay, so. I'm going to clean out that one inch round brush and maybe a little bit more grass here let's just bring in this down that way I'm not locked into any one spot here I do a little bit more and then I cover up with whatever I don't want to see path going down through here too. Well, we'll figure that out a little later. Maybe, maybe we'll do it right now. How about that? I'm going to take my fan brush here, going into my Van Dyke brown, maybe a little black, a little dark sienna. All oh, good. Just dark. And using the corner of the brush, I'm just going to pull across here. Look how short that path is. It's too far away for it to be too wide too soon, but as I start meandering this path a little closer to us, It gets a little bigger, a little wider. And who knows? It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Push a little harder, get that paint off the brush. And as you can see here, the more you go over it, you can kind of smooth and calm it down a little bit.
working our way into the foreground. And this one here, it just kind of wanders right on off down here. And look how it creates this little, this little section of grass. So I'm going to do a little bit more here, and if I don't like it, I can cover it up. There we go. Now, just a little bit here, just taking a little bit of white into that same color, maybe some dark sienna. Just a little lighter color. I'm going to graze it over some spots here. Not covering it all up, putting a little bit of highlight in there. A little more white so it stands out. Not a great deal of highlight there. Enough so you can see it. There we go. So, a little bit of this brown mixture I made up here. Oh, I might have to hold on to the easel. Just making a, a big old mass of tree shapes here. Alright, I just cover that up. It was good practice while it lasted. Some of this dark color. Gotta have a big old bunch of trees right there. Right, right there. Right there in the foreground. I can't really talk today. There it is. Now, I think, uh, this is one of those times here where Bob didn't really have hardly any of this painted back here. He didn't highlight and put in all those background trees as much as I did. Uh, for good reason. It just makes it a little easier dropping that color in if there isn't a bunch of background stuff already there. So, now I can come back here with my highlight colors. And let's see, what highlight colors do I have left? Let's take some of that yellow, flatten this down a little bit. It's got some green in it already. A little bit of that liquid white. All those yellows. Let me pull a little bit more green out of there. And let's just dance in some highlights here and there. Leaving some of the dark as our little separator. So we got all just a big old mass of color here. And as I'm running out of paint here, things are getting a little darker, a little deeper in shadow. Let some of it be. Let some of it be in shadow. Nothing wrong with that. I will need a little bit more of my yellow here, so when I do the grass, I'll have enough paint to do it. And let's see here. I think before I do too much else, Let's put in a, a different looking tree. Some of the Van Dyke Brown. And let's, oh, let's say right about there. Pull across. Plenty of color. Just trying to define a, a nice big old trunk here. Focusing mainly on the right side. trying to get the nice right side edge first. Then I'll clean it up with my knife and define the left side. 
All it needs to be is dark. See that? As long as it's mostly dark, we don't really care about anything else color-wise here. You know, just gets a little narrower as we go up. And I know the tendency is to fiddle with it. Sometimes when you fiddle with it, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger the more you go over it. So at some point you gotta stop. And maybe, maybe there'll be a little, a little branch kind of coming out of there. So of course the branch is a little wider at the trunk and then it gets a little skinnier as we go up. You're gonna have to make those adjustments. Kind of on the fly here and that's okay. Maybe another one coming off of there. We don't know. Maybe. Maybe we'll have one kind of coming off this way. We're going to go back with our liner brush anyway, so don't, don't feel the need to go over this too many times or make a, a ton of them. Just making a little indication here. Then I'll take my dark sienna with a touch of white in it. How much white is up to you? How bright do you want it? But just like making birch trees here, I'm gonna highlight the side closest to the light just by pulling across. Maybe with a little bit more white in it here and there. Same thing with the, you can get a little on the side of these branches just here and there. Gives it that bark like texture. Over on the other side, sometimes Bob will use a, even a little bit of Phthalo or Prussian Blue. I'm just using a little bit darker highlight color here just to put something out there. Okay, and now we get to play a little bit. This time I'm just using the Midnight Black with some paint thinner in it. You can use some of the brown too. I might mix a little bit of brown into it. Just very dark color here for our branches so that it flows off nice and easy from the brush. We use plenty of the paint thinner. And let's strengthen this little one up there a little bit. You guys ever see those episodes where Bob has that little paint gun? He only did that a couple times, I want to say like season one, season two, when he was uh, doing a little bit of uh, inventing. Made some, made some good branches there. I don't know whatever became of that. Lost the time here. Ooh, there was a good branch. A couple of little thingies here. This dead old tree kind of just meanders out there. Nice little branch. All these little corners and elbows. paint out here. Just clean my brush occasionally and come back right back into that paint and maybe make some dark branches and old dead tree things living down here and in between and all sorts of things happening. Alright, so 
what I'm gonna do here is I'm making up just a new batch of my highlight grass color here using my greens and yellows back and forth and tapping getting that little ridge line of paint maybe a little more green maybe a little less green more Indian yellow yellow ochre find a mix that works for you here and maybe start working our way forward and I went around the base of that that big old tree there coming down mixing in a little bit of uh, yellow ochre in this one and look how I just overlap that path a little bit helps push that path back and as I'm moving away from the light things get darker and deeper in color and value I should say val deeper in value can change the angle and make it look a little uh, taller, a little more hill-like. It's up to you. But back here, so everything's a little calmer, not so bright. Unless you think the sunlight is hitting it, then it can be brighter. If it's a little too textured, just keep tapping it and let it get a little flatter, a little silkier. It's almost like velvet. What I think of it is kind of like uh, the putting green of a golf course. Very, very flat, but still lots of varied colors in there. And you can just keep tapping your brush and still putting out highlights. It just, it just changes everything. The more you do this, Get all sorts of different effects. Look how it mixes with that brown and just dulls it down. Fills in some of these little gaps of shadows that you put in. And then as soon as you come back to more paint, that's when you can add all these little extra things, all these highlights or accentuate the shadows. out of things to say here just because I have a lot of real estate to tap in. If I use the two inch brush, oh my gosh, I think we would have been done 10 minutes ago. As I'm coming into the foreground, I like to load a little bit more paint into the brush. That way, ooh, look at that. You see how it just becomes a little more textured? It's because we would see a little bit more detail there. So things are a little bit bolder, texture-wise. Now, before I do some final highlights here, I'm going to take my, my fan brush and I can just clean up the edges of the path if I need to. Cleans up and makes that path look like it's a little more prominent. And, you know, if you want to have some of that color across the path a little bit too. That's fine. It looks like the grass is growing up. Maybe the path is a little unused so we would see some greenery kind of encroaching in there. It's up to you how you want to do it. Now I did say something there about Bob like to use a little bit of white on occasion. Sometimes he would just go into the titanium white with some of this color Look how contaminated it looks, but it's still very bright compared to what's out there. So maybe there's a couple of spots here where the sun is hitting these high spots. A 
Let's see about tapping some of those in. You can definitely overdo it. Don't want to turn everything bright white. But here and there, maybe a little bit right there. Am I doing it too much? Let me know in the comments. Did I over highlight with the white? I don't know. Maybe. So, I think there with the white, maybe a little paint thinner and liquid white. I'll sign, ooh, we're going rare today. I'll sign over on the right side here. A little bit of a T, a little bit of an S, 24. And I think we've got ourselves a completed painting. So, I hope you had a wonderful day. I hope you had a good time watching this. Give this one a try and let me know how you did. Thank you guys very much. I'll see you in the next video.